Okay, can you guys see my screen there all right? Yes, yes, all good. Okay, perfect. So I'll do, give a short introduction to some of the work that I've done on scanning in elite football over the years. Uh, we'll start that with a quick video uh, where we made an animation basically uh, looking at Philippe Coutinho uh, in a moment that ends up with a goal where he has a very, very high frequent uh, scanning pattern. We'll take a look at that. So the Champions League game against Tottenham, they're winning the ball and immediately starts to look what's happening around me, uh, looking forward, looking at space around him, looking at possible passing options if he were to get the ball, where the closest opponent. So we see this in many players, but he shows it very well here in a very high frequent manner. Um, ask for the ball at the same time that he also checks what's ahead, what's behind me someone coming from behind that are threats to take the ball away from me and where's my passing target there's so many things happening at the same time and as you can see this ends up quite well so this is a good example of course but it's also a very typical situation from some of these top level players and i also show this because this is how we basically quantify scanning so we count scans in the last approximately 10 seconds before they get the ball so in this particular sequence, he has this frequency of 1.3 scans per second. So that would be nine scans in seven seconds, which is extremely high. And I'll show you some examples of other numbers later on. So the way I've basically gone about doing this over the years is, um, and I used to call, I usually call them the most privileged students in Europe. I send them across Europe to go to stadiums to film players. Uh, so we've done this hundreds of times. Uh, with one camera where we follow a player throughout the whole game. Like you can see here, this was uh, filming Manchester United a few years ago. Lately, we've also got into youth level. Uh, so the past European championships for the under 17, under 19 and under 21, we've had cameras. Now we use uh, very sophisticated high resolution cameras where we capture all the players, but then zoom in on them using some of the technology we have for that to look at their specific scanning patterns uh, after the fact. And I wanted to start this because uh, I was asked to give an overview of my research and that's easier said than done because there's been quite a lot over the years. I started doing this actually back in 98. This is my, the cover of my master's thesis. Sedan was the big player at the time. Uh, I did a field intervention study where I trained basically players on scanning. Then I followed up with my PhD, uh, which I delivered in 2004. Uh, looked at top level players at the time, analyzed them in the same way that I do now, and I also did training studies. After that, I got a lot of really excellent students on board, and we've done so many projects on this, and I'm not going to talk about the details of this, this is just to give a little overview. In the beginning, we were just experimenting with how can we do this in bigger numbers. Uh, we touched upon defensive scanning, which I'm not going to speak so much about in my presentation, but maybe in the discussion. We talked about scanning and emotional processes such as anxiety. The next phase, we went for the best players in the world. That's when I started sending players out in collaboration with UEFA in collaboration with various clubs in the Premier League, in the Bundesliga and so forth to film some of the better players. So we've, we've basically literally scanned the, the football world for, for the best players and how are they behaving in terms of scanning. The next level again was then looking at the academy. Uh, we were fortunate to, to, to do some analysis with some of the uh, better academies uh, in Europe, among them uh, the Ajax uh, Academy. Then in the next phase, and now we're getting a few years back, we started introducing more sophisticated technology into this. We started using eye tracking. Um, my PhD student in Australia had a, a, a chip uh, in, in, in a headband where we automatically registered scanning. Um, and, and we were looking at different types of players, different levels. Then if we fast forward to today, now we're again really going wide. Uh, so we have now started to get a really good sense of what are the best youth players doing. Uh, uh, I started moving into goalkeepers uh, with a master student who just completed last week actually with uh, uh, professional goalkeepers. How are they scanning in, in possession and out of possession? And then the, there's a 
a massive study that we're actually now just completing uh, where we looked at scanning in the Premier League. 27 players across the season in many games over a total of 10,000 possessions. So we're starting now to get a really, really good grasp of what some of the best players in Europe are doing at different uh, uh, age levels. So what are we finding? Um, I'm not going to spend much time on this. This is a, an old slide that many of you may have seen. Um, we do find that there's a relationship between scanning frequency and performance. So this slide basically shows that with this particular sample from the Premier League some years ago, this, the players who scan a little, they hit around 40% of their forward passes. The players who scan a lot hit almost twice as many of their forward passes. Now, this relationship is not always as big as you can see on this slide. And of course, there's many, many nuances involved here where um, different positions, different uh, contexts, different situations, different phases of the game and so forth will play into this. But we do always find a tendency in this direction. So we do always find that there is a relationship, although sometimes small, between scanning frequency and performance. The more you scan, you tend to perform better across situations, levels, and so forth. An interesting thing for, for this particular presentation that I also wanted to share was, is this. So this is based on the, the Premier League study that I just mentioned, but we do find the same pattern across our studies. There are positional differences. So the number here is the scan frequency, the average scan frequency. Um, when you look at central midfielders saying that they have a frequency of 0 0.53, that means that they scan on average five scans per 10 seconds before they get the ball. The, def the mid midfielders and the defenders are the high, most high-frequent scanners. The forwards are the least frequent uh, scanners. That's that what we seem to find across these studies. Now, what I like with respect to scanning is diving into the details. Uh, and I'm not going to go too far on this now, but I just want to touch upon it. So, of course, we talk about scanning, which for me is defined as taking the eyes off the ball with the intention of gathering information for better engaging with the ball. Scan frequency I've introduced, scans per second. Then we can try to get into even more, more little intricate uh, parts of this. So scan excursion is basically how far away are you looking? What's the angle with which you look? Uh, how much do you turn away from the ball? Scan length. So in a simple scan, how many seconds or how, how long do you actually stay away from the ball? Scan direction, simple left or right. Scan symmetry, both left and right to literally scan what's behind you. Scan sequence is when you look at multiple sources of information uh, between every gaze on the ball. So some players do that in the sense that they are, are, are sampling information from many different sources and then they go back to the ball. The typical playmakers in the team are good at that. Micro scans are the scans that aren't involving the big movements of the head, but more maybe the little movements of the eye. Take a player like Messi. He is a champion of micro scans, very frequent, small scans where he samples information from all over the display. Scan timing, if we have time, we'll get into that more later. Uh, when you scan is, in my opinion, and based on our data, critical. It's not just about scanning much. It's about when you look at the ball and when you look away from the ball. And then finally, deception scans. Because, of course, while scanning, you're also giving away information about your intentions, what you want to do. And, and, and that you can use to your benefit or opponents can use it to, to get something on you. A little bit about training and then towards the end. So scan, scanning training for me is about having the ideal exercises, but even more, it's about not doing the wrong exercises. If everyone can look at the, the players in this red square here, this is a top Bundesliga team. Uh, they're doing a passing receiving drill. And if I may ask you, count the number of scans that you see in this little drill for the next like 10, 12 seconds. The number of scans, how many scans do you see? Did you lose count? Probably not. I don't think there's a single scan. And why would they? Because they're doing just a passing receiving drill. Now, the point is, even though this is good for passing receiving, getting warmed up and so forth, this is in essence training these players that every time they receive the ball, they look at the ball. And that's a skill with continual fresh in mind is not necessarily good to have on the field. So this is an exercise that probably make these players worse at something critical in the game. 
What's an uh, option for that? Let's look at Tottenham's Son in this little example from a warm up before a game. Between every touch, a little scan. Now, why does he do that? He's not looking at something in particular. It's not a perfect exercise because he's not behaving based on that information, but it leads not, it's not a horrible exercise in that you're building a habit with reference to scanning that you don't want to have. So this is preferable in my opinion. A better exercise is this. This is from the Dutch team head and fan where you have a player in the middle, the players behind the player before he gets the ball, they're moving to either left or right and the player in the middle need to make a decision on what direction to move based off of what he sees behind his back. And that's a much better exercise because then you actually have to move based on what you see. And Jon Janssen passionately coaching the, the scanning with the Dutch word kike, which I, which I love in this, uh, this one. A little bit of data towards the very end now. So we did a study with uh, FC Groningen, the Dutch, Dutch team, uh, first team, and we looked at how is their scanning frequency in game versus practice activities. So in game, these six players had a, a frequency of 0 0.44, which is kind of average. And then we looked at what is the frequency in these different types of training, training exercises. Small-sided games, 0.36, possession games, 0.22, passing, receiving, 0.12, and roundo, 0.03. Meaning that these different training exercises have much less scanning than what you see in the game. And then you can argue, are these exercises then fully aligned with what happens in the game? Should they maybe be more tailored to the game? Now, this doesn't mean that the rondo is a bad exercise, because I think the rondo is a fantastic exercise, but it does not exercise the ability to scan behind your back. Uh, and for a coach, I think it's just important to be aware of what do these exercises bring with respect to the end product that we want to see in the game. Now to, to look at this and use some technology and a little bit more sophisticated kind of analysis systems uh, uh, to, to look at that. Um, now, uh, I'm going to show a couple of things, but before I do that, I'm going to just mention briefly what I'm not showing. Uh, so what I'm not showing is, is the latest work we've done into uh, tracking these types of behaviors as they happen on the pitch. Uh, so we've started using uh, uh, machine learning systems and computer vision and these types of technologies that actually automatically track what's going on on the pitch. Um, and, and this, this I will not show, uh, but, uh, but this is taking this to, a, again, a, a next level where I think it's, it's going to be possible for clubs to have access to, to, to measurements, to, uh, uh, to, to basically uh, uh, to know where their players are to a much larger extent than, than what we have uh, and now. Now, with that said, um, <clears throat> what I wanted to uh, focus on just quickly is is this so because now um, definitely in what I've uh, said but also to some extent what we speak about when we speak about scanning we're we're looking from the outside and in so we're we're coaches we're analysts we're looking at players what they do in terms of their behaviors a technology that has been around for for decades but only now the last few years uh, come in a shape that actually it's, makes it possible to use it in a dynamic fluid game situation is eye trackers. So we've started experimenting with, with, with these, uh, me and my students this, this past few years, um, and we've been fortunate to get access to some, some nice uh, uh, groups of, of players at a reasonably high level. Um, so what you, what you see here is, is these players wearing these eye trackers. Um, now, uh, this is a piece of equipment that, that costs, I think, in the vicinity of uh, 20,000 euro or something like that for one pair of glasses. Uh, so we're quite uh, um, well, cautious when, when we use them, and, and I, I would even say scared when our players uh, put them on in game situations. Uh, each pair of glasses has, has five cameras in them. So it's one camera that points straight forward, giving you basically a, a GoPro kind of video of what what is in the field of vision of these players. And then there are two cameras that points inwards towards the player's eyes, uh, two cameras on, on, on each eye. And what they do is that they provide us with a, a, a following an, an algorithm 
uh, with a little spot uh, that indicates on that field of vision video exactly where the player's visual fixation is. And that gives us now suddenly an opportunity to actually see more what these players are looking at, which again doesn't necessarily mean that we know what they're seeing because that's a, another process, but it's a better kind of starting point. So we've done this with um, Rosenborg, uh, a top level Norwegian team. Uh, we, we got access to their first team players and we put these goggles on, on a few of them uh, when they played a, just, just a friendly game, but 11 v 11 friendly game. So here's, here's one of the players and I have to warn you now, if I remember correctly, the sound is quite high on this. So if any of you have uh, uh, this in your ear, you may wanna be careful with, with them now if, because there's also a microphone in these classes that pick up the sounds that come uh, when, 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 uh, when they play. So let's start this. So with this, of course, you see the scanning. This is the same one, just in slow motion. Uh, scanning with your head, but also scanning with your eyes. Uh, so it's picking up more detailed, more nuanced information. Now, obviously we can't use these in actual official games, uh, but using it in these types of situations with different players in different positions gives us a lot of information. And some of these teams that we've used this with, uh, they also use it as a, basically a coaching tool. Um, And we're now in the process of publishing uh, uh, some of these articles that we've written based off of this. So, so I feel like we're, we're starting to get somewhere now with respect to knowing more and more about what this whole concept of visual perception and scanning is about with football players at a, at a relatively high level. So that's one example. The other example is, uh, and I mentioned this in the beginning, um, I've been involved in the startup of a, a software company where we set out five years ago to try to create um, a technology that can be used to supplement training when it comes to these processes. And that word is important. This is a supplement to training. The basics of training, of scanning and decision-making and perception is the types of activities that, that ha has been covered by, by Mikael and, and Jan today. Uh, that's the basics. But is there something you can put on top of that? Is there something that you can have for for practice on days where your physical load is already exhausted, you can put more physical work into this. You, is it something you can do to, to basically warm up your perceptual visual system before you go out to practice? Is there something you can use for injured players who cannot do regular training? And that's how we've come up with this. And there's been a lot of development going into this, a lot of investments, of course. Uh, and now we see that, that more and more teams and players are starting to use this. And I'll show you one example here. This is a this is a Norwegian under 19 uh, uh, player um, who uh, um, th this team is one of the teams that have used this now for a few years. Uh, his friends are standing around him. So there's a competitive element here. What he now sees through the glasses is what you will glimpse on the screen that is, that is on the computer here. So basically he's placed in game situations and we've taken game situations from top level European football, Premier League, Champions League, and we have more than a thousand of these situations now. You're put into that situation. You know that you will get the ball in about three, four or six, seven seconds. Uh, and your task is obviously as in football to figure out what's going on around you, pick up that information because when you get it, given that this is Premier League level, if, if you haven't prepared, you will be tackled and it will hurt, not physically, but it will hurt mentally in, in these situations. So, and I have one example of, uh, this is uh, something like what it looks like when you actually have these glasses on with the sound. So this is a video of a player playing this game basically. And then you get feedback like, like that.
So you get feedback on your frequency, you get feedback on your squat quality. This is a topic I haven't spoken much about uh, uh, today, but uh, I mentioned it uh, earlier that the timing of scanning is, is essential. When do you look away from the ball? When do you look at the ball? There are certain moments of the game where it's critical that you look at the ball because the most relevant information is around the ball. But then there are a lot of moments where you don't have to look at the ball and that's where you look away from the ball. And we measure this using this, uh, this tool. So it's possible to get very detailed feedback on some of these processes that are, are extremely difficult for a coach to give good feedback on. So that I believe is what I wanted to, to share towards the end of, of, of this session today.